We are back with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Jennifer Ellerman, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for 2013 for the Sacramento City Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. And congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, tell us about yourself. Tell us what you teach and where. I, um, I'm currently teaching seventh grade language arts at California Middle School in Lamb Park, Sacramento. Yeah, I love it. Okay, so tell, tell, explain what language arts is. So language arts is um, reading and writing all together in one. And it's um, with a, we're um, actually the last couple of years we've really started to put an emphasis more on writing. Typically, and I know a lot of um, the language arts instruction in the past was focused on reading. And we're doing that a lot, but with the new Common Core curriculum that we're implementing, which is really exciting, mm -hmm. um, we're really starting to put a heavy, heavy emphasis on writing in the classroom, especially in language arts. So we do a lot of that. And we're doing a lot of, instead of the creative writing piece, which um, I think they, they get some exposure to, a little bit more exposure to in the lower grades. We're really putting a heavy emphasis on expository writing, argumentative writing, mm -hmm. um, persuasive pieces, responding to literature. More academic writing. Absolutely, yeah. What kind, of, what kind of change do you see in the students when you start to really push that academic writing? What kind of changes do you see in them? It's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. We, um, I, I think the emphasis on writing has been uh, kind of multifaceted because we we one reason we started to have push writing so much is it gives the teacher amazing feedback as to really where the learning is taking place and where there's gaps in the learning mm -hmm. because you can get yes or no answers or multiple choice answers or um, yes or no's um, and you know if the students got it right or wrong but you have no idea if they got it wrong why mm -hmm. or if they got it right why did they get it right? Do they really understand what's going on? So we started initially that shift of having every student write every answer um, on a piece of paper instead of raising hands and sharing out in class. It was, what do you think the answer is? And then justify it, prove it to me, tell me why. And that gave us not only who's getting it right or wrong, but the reasoning behind. And maybe some students were getting the answer correct, but the reasoning wasn't quite, quite where it should have been either. So it really helps us to gauge where they are and um, where we can kind of help them fill in the goals. And then the, the um, second piece of that is we know that when we're forced to write, we're forced to think at a, mm -hmm. at a deeper level. And learning takes place at a deeper level and it processes in our brain at a deeper level. And so when you force the students to write it out, they can't hide behind someone's answer. They can't hide behind you know, a good yes or no, they are forced to really think and write it out. And it's intimidating at first. We all are intimidated sure. to put our thoughts on paper. It's like, oh my gosh. But once they really, once it becomes part of the daily practice and we all are okay with not having the right answer, um, they really get into it. And we really are able to see, like I said, where the holes are. And then we're also able to see the learning go on at such a deeper level. And you're also preparing them for the next step in their education. Absolutely. Absolutely, because one thing we're doing also is um, in their writing, what they're having to do is critical analysis and critical response to whatever they've read. And so we're still doing narratives, um, narrative pieces of literature that are high interest, but, um, but increasing the rigor in the classroom through having them not just respond, who is this character and what did this character do, but evaluate this character's choices. Mm -hmm. Evaluate the difference is in um, how the author used the setting to develop this character in this piece versus how the author used in a completely different piece used a setting to develop a different character and that's a lot more rigorous that's a lot higher level thinking and they don't get to just guess an answer if they have to write a five paragraph piece about it so mm -hmm. it's exciting and then we've also implemented um, nonfiction texts. Okay that cut tie into the novel that they have to read and respond to critically. So it's really, it's so you're really pushing the critical thinking. Really pushing the critical thinking because they need to be, we need to prep them for college and career and bubbling in and just remembering what color the car was in the story or um, what the character did is not gonna prepare them for that. Exactly. They have to an be able to analyze things. They have to be able to pull from multiple sources and understand it and make judgments about it themselves. And, um, and when they do that, the buy-in is so much higher because they, they, they have really a connection. absolutely yeah. and they feel valued because I'm asking them to write about their critical thinking about this. Oh, you care about what I think about it? Yeah, I do.
Mm -hmm. So I think it, it really helps. Well, how did you get into teaching? Tell us a little bit about yourself. I just always wanted to do it. Um, I had teachers that I loved. I had several teachers that I felt like were really um, ineffective, and I saw some kids not do well, just several. And I remember thinking, oh, you know, this, this, these students need a better experience than this. This is really causing problems. But, but more than that, I remember seeing in my class so many teachers inspire um, students and people, people that were having difficulties at home, including myself. I had some challenges growing up, and the um, teachers really, one thing that I really appreciated is when they could have lowered their expectations for me because of some challenges we were having, um, they didn't. They increased almost expectations. Mrs. Woodcox, she was great, and Mrs. Herring, elementary school. Mm -hmm. But they, they saw potential, and they just increased the expectations, and it kind of helped me rise above um, different challenges and kind of become my best and it was that it was that ability for for a teacher to impart a belief sh to model that ch to that child I believe in you and then the children can kind of pick that up and start to believe in themselves and do all kinds of fabulous things so you're saying if you raise the expectation you could raise the results absolutely yeah. every time Every time, because what you're saying to them, when you raise the expectation, what you're saying is not, I want you to work harder because I mean, what you're saying is, I think that you're this, not just this, but I think this is how amazing you are. And they respond. Love it. They love yeah. it. Yeah. What are some of the biggest challenges you, you've seen? Oh, how long have you been teaching? Uh, I will be starting my 14th year. Okay. And so, what are some of the biggest challenges that you see? Uh, uh, working with students now, uh, is it a lot that a lot of students come in with baggage, or is it um, just kind of the economic times? What would you say? I I would say yes and yes. Okay. <laughs> uh huh. I, I the students definitely. Anytime we bring in a piece about economy or um, you know financial stability, there's always this perk up because you know that it's relevant to what's going on in their lives. But there's also a lot of children from you know, broken homes or, or people because of the economy are struggling, people have, were struggling even before the economy, and they come in with a lot of heavy, heavy things going on. And I know I could relate to that because I had a similar experience. And it's, it's a challenge, but it's so rewarding and it's such an honor to be able to create a safe place for them, and that's always the goal, is for them to love to be there. Even though you're asking them to work hard and challenging them, you still want them to love to be there, and you want to create um, a safe place where they can be, um, even if when they go home it's not quite a safe place. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a relief, and it's always the goal is to show them if they come from a really difficult situation that whatever's going on right now doesn't have to dictate what their future is like. They get to kind of choose their own path. And so being to be able to impart that to them is amazing. You refer to the fact that you grew up with a difficult background. Does that kind of give you, you think, extra insight it to does. Some today's students? Yeah. I, I really think it does because I think um, I know that sometimes when you're sitting there completely spaced out and disengaged, it's not because you're being disrespectful or intentionally or because you don't care. Mm -hmm. It's because you're weighed down by other things that are happening. And I also know that um, pre providing that, um, that belief and that positivism and that structure and that high expectation can really help pull the student out of that to where they're not so bogged down with what's going on, but they're like, okay, what can I do, you know, and how can I achieve? And so, yeah, I think it. I think it's been it's been helpful for me to be able to relate. And so, by being able to relate, you feel you have good insight with these kids. So you kind of maybe know what their next thought might be, not just what they're thinking, but where they're going next. Yes, and not just because I struggled, but because, and that's why I love language arts. We take the time through different avenues. A lot of times through writing, sometimes conferencing one on one. I can connect in that. It's like, okay, let's go sit down and just talk to me what's going on. And that's amazing too because they've, sometimes kids come in with this major chip on their shoulder and then you, you pull them aside or um, during library, the library's a good time to kind of sit and chat with kids one-on-one -on -one or during lunch or after school and you just hear their voice and you let them 
just share. And then all of a sudden, it's like oh, they got it out, they got it off their chest, and then they come in and they're ready to learn. And that's so. why you're a teacher of the year for the Sac City Unified mm -hmm. School District. Thank you. We appreciate your time. We were speaking so with Jennifer Elliman, one of two teachers of the year from the Sacramento City Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me.